Hey guys, it's Debbie. Welcome back to my YouTube channel where we speak life. Speak what you seek until you see what you said. If you're new here, welcome. My content is centralized around Christ, loving each other. I talk about medicine, I talk about military, I'm in the process of applying to BA school. And if any of that resonates with you guys, please click that bell icon so that you guys can get more notifications on videos like these. And then click that subscribe button as well. Today's video is going to be centered on medical professions within the military. How can you use the perks that the military has to get you to where you want to be? So I'll be talking about just a few professions. Again, I am not a recruiter and I am not part of AMED recruiting, which you guys will know here in a second what that means. So I will give you guys the resources, all the links that you need to be successful and to just do your research on certain medical professions down in this description box below. So please don't take my word for it. This is just a kind of like, oh, I didn't know about that. Oh, I didn't know they offered that so that you can get, you know, take charge of your military career, gear it to where you need to be and just be successful and have fun with it. So I will be reading from my notes because again, I'm not a recruiter. I'm just here to kind of spark that interest in whatever you want to do with your military career if it has to do with medicine. So AMED stands for Army Medical Department. A-M-E-D-D -D acronym and it is made up of six special officer branches or corps and they provide a variety of medical jobs. You have the medical corps which includes 40 physician specialties such as internal medicine, emergency medicine, etc. Then you have the nurse corps, dental corps, veterinarian corps, medical service corps, uh, that's administrative scientist, uh, basically what I was doing as a combat medic. And then you have medical specialist corps, which includes four specialties, physical therapists, occupational therapists, clinical uh, dietitians, and physician assistants. So we are going to be talking about a few of those and where to look, where to start looking. And we're also going to be talking about my MOS and other medical MOS MOSs within the military. So at first, a little bit of background about me, I served three years in the active duty component as a healthcare specialist, combat medic. I was stationed at Fort Riley, Kansas. I was able to go on a rotation for about nine months to Romania, where I got to work with uh, NATO forces, Ukraine, Italian, German, uh, French, Romanian. I, it was just an amazing experience. Um, as I came back, I worked in the clinic very intimately with my physician assistant who is part of the 75th Ranger Regiment and currently he is doing a program that allows him to specialize in emergency medicine so that he can go back into the regiment um, as a ER or emergency medicine physician assistant. So I know that's a handful, but I'm basically going to tell you what my process was like. I was an EMT for about almost two years before I joined the military. I loved medicine. I always knew that that's something I wanted to go into, so I began doing that. And then I progressed into, oh, I wanna expand my mindset, start developing some global mindedness. And so I joined active duty. It was kind of scary because I had no idea what to expect, but I felt like as an EMT, I prepared myself for anything. I saw trauma patients, I saw non-emergency patients, I did transport documentation, I built my mental resilience. I felt like I was gonna be okay. So I joined for three years. The thing about my MOS is that I believe, and I have the notes down here, my MOS is 16 weeks, it's 10 weeks of basic combat training. Everyone does that, except you have other MOSs that stay there for longer, like infantry or military police. But for my MOS, it was 10 weeks. And then you do 16 weeks of advanced individual training at Fort Sam Houston, Texas. And so that's if they have the job available to you when you talk to a recruiter, and that's exactly when you take your ASVAP, that's the job that you want, it's available, you can secure it, that's that. So you have to score a specific GT score, ASVAP score, all that can be found in the description below. Um, and then you can enter. And that's for anything like x-ray tech, dental assistant, uh, healthcare specialist, a lab technician. You just have to uh, do research on what exactly in the medical field you want to do. So that's what I did. And so I went in, but because I already had my NREMT license, I did not have to do the first half of that 16 weeks. I was a holdover, so I had to wait till they finished that so that I can join them to learn 
military medicine, combat medicine, uh, army medicine, basically. So that part is kind of word of advice. If you're doing what I'm doing, the best thing to do is to act like you don't know anything because army medicine is very different than being an EMT. I have to make a video on the two, what we can do and what we can. can. We have a lot more autonomy as a healthcare specialist, as a combat medic in the army than we do in the civilian side of being an EMT. But you're able to do IV access, you're able to uh, give fluids, you're able to give blood, etc. Those type of procedures we kind of don't do in the civilian side. So. All that being said, that was that was kind of what you were learning in those 12 weeks, not all of it. They expect you to go to your units and learn a lot more advanced procedures like chest tubes and things like that. If you're thinking of joining, I would talk to individuals about their experience. So I created this YouTube channel and I have a lot more videos kind of just talking about different phases of my military career, how that looked like. And so I began talking about my deployment, I talked about being in the clinic, I talked about you know, going to basic leaders course, how I became a sergeant, all that jazz. Like I am very transparent here on my channel, so that's there for you guys. And I also done interviews on army PAs that went through the IPAP, which we'll talk about here in a second, and then civilian PAs who entered into the army to pay for student loans. So if that's something you're interested in, please go ahead and check that video out. But Thinking of joining, talk to people about it. Talk to a, me a healthcare specialist, talk to a recruiter. But you know, recruiters sometimes are a hit or miss because I'm not trying to bash them or anything, but they are trying to make numbers. So you need to find a recruiter that you feel like is there for you. My recruiter, Dennis Anton, I think that was his name. I still remember him because he was very understanding about my situation. He fought for what I wanted and I knew that he was really looking out for my interests my best interest. So talk to a recruiter, talk to nurses, talk to uh, PAs, talk to doctors, because although they might not be in the military, they all say the same thing about how it's nice to become one of those specialties in the military because they offer to pay for those things. Even the difference between doctor and PA, like you can talk to them about which one is more beneficial for you. And that's something I've learned and come to realize why I wanted to become a PA and not a doctor. If that's something you guys wanted to want to know then let me know comment down below and I'll be happy to make a video about it there's requirements to join the army medical department AMED you have to have or plan to have a medical degree have a plan to have a license to practice medicine be between 21 to 42 years old and be eligible for secret security clearance we talked about medical corps medical corps is a staff corps made up of commissioned medical officers such as physicians with an md or do degree dental corps is teaches more residents than any other institution in the country you have the veterinarian corps overseas World department of defense veterinarian services and then you have nurse corps made up of more than 11,000 soldiers who provide health care to military members families and retirees, Medical Service Corps, Medical Specialist Corps. So IPAP, what is that? That's the Inter-Service Physician Assistance Program that a 29 month program that is offered to active duty military, it doesn't matter what branch you're in, Army, Navy, uh, Marines, Air Force, it, it does not matter. Now, reservists, I'm not really sure. I don't have that much information on reserve, but I'm sure that their website, which is linked down in the description below, kind of tells you about that. And then also contact your AMED recruiter to kind of see how that, that looks. So uh, you commission, you let's say I start in an active duty. So if I apply to IPAP, my rank sergeant, uh, that's how I would apply through my rank and then throughout my 29 months that's what I'm getting paid as I'm getting paid as my rank a, a, a sergeant then after that I become a first lieutenant and I get paid after I graduate I get paid the first lieutenant pay and they also have bonuses and stuff like that for specifically PAs so that being said um, all the re the requirements that you need to know about how to enter this program is going to be in that link in the description box and so what happens is you have to do an active component obligation of 54 months upon graduation so it's about four and a half years of active duty service because you go to school for free while also getting paid so it's kind of like you know you, your job is to 
be present and learning for and become a PA. So I think that was completely awesome. A uh, physical therapist, civilians, you know, they get their doctor of, doctor of um, physical therapy degree, complete ADPT program from, um, from a commission or accreditation in physical therapy education. Um, if they apply for active duty or United States Army Reserve, if they're graduating from an accredited U.S. school within six weeks with six months with a qualified degree, they can come in as a physical therapist. Okay, so if you have civilian degree, uh, degree and you want to join the military, for, I don't know, loan repayment or just because you feel like that, I'm gonna tell you right now that you definitely are gonna be put to work as a physical therapist in the military because soldiers are active every day. So yes, it's very much needed. Uh, the military also offers two loan repayment options for th physical therapy school. So you can get your bachelor's degree with an ROTC um, and then apply for an ed delay to attend a civilian PT program. And the Army may grant you an educational delay, that's what ED means, um, to earn a master's or doctorate degree. This allows you to delay your service until you complete a higher degree. So let's say you do ROTC, which is basically, I'm going to school in hopes of, not hopes, but you will be joining the military. And they're paying for your school to join the military to commission, okay? so. That's kind of the same thing, except the ED is educational delay in which you further that bachelor's to earn your doctorate or to um, attend a civilian PT school, uh, school. After completing the degree, you will require you will be required to fulfill your military obligation. So attend the U.S. Army Baylor University DPT program for free tuition and a salary. So again, you get paid to go to school and or attend a civilian DPT school and apply for direct commission into the military. Nurse. Now, nurse is one of the biggest ones that I've had people ask me and I've gotten so many different ways you can become a nurse uh, there is a mos for nurse i believe it's 68 charlie if i'm not mistaken it's basically you would go to recruiter if it's available that's what you're gonna do you go 10 weeks basic training and then i don't know how i think there's is like a year over a year which makes sense being a nurse you're going to be doing a lot more than a healthcare specialist or a combat medic you're required to pass if not you have to change your mos to something else and that kind of sucks and i've heard horror stories on people having to drop out of being a nurse because they didn't pass exams so make sure you do your research if that's something you want to do but that's one option or you earn a bachelor's degree in nursing and you take, can you pass your NCLEX? It's the test to become a licensed registered nurse. Six months to one year experience and practicing is what you need before you commission into the military. Okay, so then you, you do an application packet for direct commission program. When accepted, you complete your officer training courses, which is specifically what, you know, officers need to complete. When you become an officer like lieutenant, first lieutenant, second lieutenant, captain, that's kind of, you know, you're a leader, leader, so they require you to take additional courses. But then you also have the AECP program, which is the AMED Enlisting Commissioning program. It allows regular army to become a nurse through the AMED Enlisting Commissioning program. So I have a lot more information on how you can do that. For example, I have a friend right now um, she is currently a combat medic active duty, but she is in contact with the university for this particular program. She is currently awaiting to finish her prerequisites to send all that information down to the board so that they can figure out whether or not she's granted. So it's always a hit or miss. The one thing you need to remember is that if the military needs it, it's okay to you know be approved. But if not, it's really just we're working under the military schedule. So um, yeah, more information on the AECP will be down below in the description. Doctor, doctor is pretty, I feel like you can get a lot of information more than what I'm saying here about how to be a doctor. And that is just, you know, get full tuition covered for up to four years when you apply for the Army's Health Profession Scholarship Program called the HPSP, and that will help you pay for medical school. So you can graduate from medical school without debt and earn a 2,700 plus monthly allowance depending on if you have dependents, meaning if you're married, if you have kids, where do you live, uh, geographically that matters. 
and then receive a 20,000 signing bonus. Now, the signing bonus may change, and it might be different for other medical services, but that's what it says right now, is that you can enlist with a $20,000 signing bonus to become a doctor and to practice within military medicine, and I think just being a doctor in the military is awesome. Advice, start seeking out individuals who personally went through that route, make a good impression, be accountable. And that way you can start figuring out who your letter of, uh, you want to request letter of recommendations for. And this is even after the fact, like let's say you wanna be, you wanna go into nursing or like me, I'm going into civilian PA school. I had to make those connections, be accountable and be personable to the people that I work with in the clinic. So I got my letters of recommendations from my physician assistant, from the brigade nurse and from my EMT captain from back home. I developed these relationships and I made consist I've been consistent with them. I'm just maintain that communication and let them know what my goal is so that they know, oh yeah, okay, I remember she's one day gonna ask for a letter of recommendation. And they put it in on time. They, they gave me the best, um, I'm sure they gave me the best letters to put in there. And so I scored two physician assistant interviews, one in Kentucky and one in Kansas. And so far it's really early in the cycle. So I always tell myself that being a PA, I want to go back into the army at some point to help soldiers and help in that medical field because I absolutely love the military culture. It resonates with me, it sticks, it stuck with me and I just feel like I can really grow and really be myself in that area. I know this was a lot of information and I really hope this helped you kind of figure out what you want. I know I did talk about occupational therapists and veterinarian medicine. Those are not really my big specialties. Um, I current, my pastor's wife right now is working as an occupational therapist in the military as a civilian and she's getting paid government pay and she doesn't have to adhere to the ranking system and she absolutely loves it, okay? So I think she's a assistant, I don't remember, but you have to get your master's and she also works with people who they have their master's in occup occupational therapy and they absolutely love it in the military as well. So. I hope this video, although had a lot of information, gave you guys a glimpse of the perks that the military offers for you to become success successful and ultimately reach your desired profession within the military in medicine. And so for me, I know I didn't become, I didn't do the iPad program, but I did retain a lot of information, a lot of characteristics and a lot of attributes of the PA profession based off of the physician assistants I've worked with and I've shadowed in the military and I know that I'm going to take that into civilian PA and eventually hopefully get a opportunity to enlist back as maybe reserve National Guard I don't know if I would do active it would depend on where I'm at with my family at that point but yes I will link all the information what you need to know about these programs and such down in the description below and please just reach out to a med recruiter or a recruiter in general and find someone that you feel like is invested in your goals, in your future endeavors. You need to have that connection. You can't just find somebody that's like, just wants to sign numbers and be like, oh, I got somebody enlisted in the military. No, avoid that, okay? God bless you guys and I hope you have a great, great day. See ya.